Okay, so chapter 25 is going to be about digital imaging. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to define the key terms associated with digital imaging, describe the purpose and use of digital imaging, discuss the fundamentals of digital imaging, describe radiation exposure in digital imaging, list and describe the equipment used in digital imaging, and list and describe the two types of digital imaging. You should be able to describe the patient and equipment preparations required for digital imaging, and list and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of digital imaging. All right, so why are we doing this chapter? Well, uh, we need to talk about the concepts of digital imaging. We need to introduce the different types of imaging that there are, and we need to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages. So why would we use digital over film, right? Um, it's relatively new. Uh, it's, not, it's I mean, it's not that new. It was actually invented in the 1960s, the concept of it. Uh, it came around more in like the 1980s, and even today, not every single office is using digital. Most of them are, the vast, vast majority of them are, but, um, but not everyone. All right, so the basic concepts for um, digital radiography is that we're no longer using film or processing chemicals. Those are a thing of the past. And then we are using an electronic sensor and a computerized imaging system. So it doesn't, you know, you can't just take the sensor and plug it into any computer. We have to have that software system downloaded um, and able to capture these radiographic images. Um, and it happens almost instantaneous. It depends on the type that you're using and, and maybe the, the software that you have, but it's, it's almost instant. All right, so the terminology that we have, uh, these um, vocab words are on page 288. I'm just going to read them right out of the book for you. So analog image is an, a radiographic image that's produced by conventional film. So anytime we talk about traditional film, you can also use the word analog image. A bit depth image is the number of grayscale combinations for each pixel. Um, so for instance, they have eight bit depth, which is kind of its, its common one. Um, and you take two um, and the exponent is whatever the bit depth is. Um, and so that math will give you how many different shades of gray that you can get for that pixel. Charge coupled device or a CCD is a solid state silicone chip detector that converts light or x-ray photons into electrical charge or signal. So in digital imaging, a CCD is found in the sensor. Digital imaging is filmless imaging system, a method of capturing an image using a sensor, breaking it into electronic pieces and presenting and storing the image using a computer and software. Digital image is an image composed of pixels that can be stored in a computer. Digital subtraction is one feature of digital imaging. It is a method where they reverse the grayscale of an image. So anything that was radiolucent will appear white and anything that was radiopaque or white will now appear black. And then digitize, which in digital imaging uh, is used to convert an image into a digital form that in turn can be processed by a computer. But wait, there's more. So direct digital imaging is a method of obtaining a digital image in which an intraoral sensor is exposed to X radiation to capture a dental image that can be viewed on a computer monitor. Indirect digital imaging is a method of obtaining the digital image in which the sensor is scanned following X, -ray, uh, X radiation exposure and then converted into digital form that can be viewed on a computer monitor. Line pairs per millimeter, which is LP slash MM. It is a measurement used to evaluate the ability of the computer to capture the resolution or the detail of an image. A pixel, which we're all aware of because we all take pictures, right? Uh, is a discrete unit of information and a digital electronic in digital electronic images, digital information is contained in and presented as discrete units of information, which is also termed a picture element. But they're basically each little tiny square that makes up the, the overall whole picture um, is, is a pixel. Um, a sensor in digital imaging a, is a receptor that's used to capture an intraoral or extraoral image. And the storage phosphor imaging is a method of obtaining a digital image in which the image is recorded on a phosphor coated plate and then placed into an electronic processor or a scanner, uh, which scans the plate and produces an image on the computer. 
So the purpose and use of digital radiography is the exact same as the purpose and use of um, all radiology. So both film and digital are hoping to generate images that can be used in the diagnosis and assessment of dental disease to detect lesions, diseases, and conditions of the teeth and surrounding structures to confirm or classify suspected disease, to localize lesions or foreign objects, and to provide information during dental procedures like uh, for endodontics. Uh, the images produced are diagnostically equivalent to, or even sometimes better than, film-based images, thus enabling the dental radiographer to see conditions that cannot be identified clinically. We also use these radiographs to evaluate growth and development, to illustrate changes secondary to caries, like periodontal disease or trauma, to document the condition of a patient at a specific point in time, and to aid in the development of a clinical treatment plan. So digital images present information that is similar to film-based imaging, just a lot faster and sometimes better and uh, more manipulative. Okay, so the fundamentals of digital imaging is that it's a method of capturing the image on a sensor. It breaks it into electronic pieces and then it sends those pieces to a computer, which then reorganizes them and shows you the image. The image is then used to describe the pictures that are produced well, no, it's the image The image is the image. The sensor is placed inside the mouth and the electronic signal is digitized. Um, so the type of technique that is used with digital imaging is that the sensor picks up the x-rays, transmits the image to the computer, which then digitizes the image and displays it. Um, it is still radiation exposure. So digital imaging requires less X radiation exposure than film based imaging. The typical sensor is more sensitive to X rays than uh, conventional film is. So depending on the size of film that was being used, the exposure time is anywhere from 50 to 90% less than what was required for conventional radiography. However, in Digital radiology, the patient still needs to wear a lead apron. There has been some, um, you know, questioning that's come out, some papers that are, you know, trying to say that maybe the, the lead apron is no longer necessary. Certain states don't require it um, in certain cases, but as far as our clinic goes, as far as the overall consensus still uh, puts out, the, the lead apron is still something that patients need to wear even during digital radiographs. All right, so we're gonna talk about a little bit of each of one of these, but uh, the equipment that we need is gonna be the X-ray unit, the sensor, which includes the charge couple device, a complementary metal oxide semiconductor, the charge injection device, and we need a computer, right? You can't have computer X-rays if you don't have a computer. All right, first up is our x-ray unit. So older units were able to break down seconds um, of exposure time into 1 60th of a second, right? An impulse is 1 60th of a second. Well, for digital radiographs, we need to be able to break down that second into 1 one hundredths of a second, which means that if your um, unit is older and it doesn't have a little button for you to switch to digital, then that means you're going to be overexposing your patients because you wouldn't be able to come all the way down to maybe 0 0.05 of a second. You are, you know, only able to to come down to, um, you know, the, the breakdown of impulses. And so um, make sure that whatever unit you're using, if you're using digital radiography, that it is able to break down to one one hundredth of a second. Okay, so the sensor is going to be a little small detector that you place into the mouth of the patient, and it's what captures the radiographic image, okay? The sensor is what replaces the film. And so there are wired sensors um, with a fiber optic cable. That's the kind we have at, in, in our clinic. And then they have wireless ones too. Wireless ones look exactly like um, ours do, except instead of a cable, it has like a little battery pack on it. They're a little bit bigger. They're a little bulkier than... Um, than the wired cables, but uh, what's nice is you're not uh, tied down by that wire, right? Because sometimes, I mean, you might get the wire in the way, so it makes sense. Um, it's able to send the, the image to the computer via Wi-Fi, which I think is really cool. All of these sensors um, come in sizes zero, one, two, and four, because three is worthless. 
The two most popular types of direct sensor technologies are the charge coupled device and the complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Both of them are rigid solid state detectors that are made of silicone that are arranged in an array of X-ray sensitive pixels. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so CCD, charge coupled device. This is the most common image receptor that's used in dental digital imaging. This is the kind we have. Um, it's a solid state detector that contains a silicone chip with an electronic circuit embedded in it. The electrons that make up the silicone CCD can be visualized as being divided into an arrangement of blocks or pixel picture elements known as pixels. So if you imagine sort of like a grid, of it. Um, they're 512 by 512 pixels. The pixel is a small box or well in which the electrons produced by the x-ray exposure are deposited. So what happens is the x-ray photons are directed toward however many of those x-ray photons are able to penetrate whatever structures they have to, to get through in order to get to the receptor. If they get through, then they will be deposited into the little well of the pixel of where uh, it, it is on the sensor. And then the sensor, you know, sort of stores that energy just for a moment and will send, you know, that latent image through the cord or through Wi-Fi over to the computer. Those X-ray photons that come into contact with the CCD cause electrons to be released from the silicone and produce a corresponding electronic charge. Each pixel arrangement or electronic potential well contains the electronic charge proportional to the number of electrons that reacted within the well. So depending on how many electrons um, are you know, it reached and how much energy gets through depends on how dark or the color, the shade of gray that that um, that pixel well, the electronic potential well will cause. Uh, sent over to the computer. So depending on how many x-ray photons pass through and reach the sensor, that's how dark a color that it's going to send to the computer. Each electronic well corresponds to a specific area on the linked computer screen, which I mean, it's going to, the grid is on the sensor. It's going to send that exact same grid over to the computer. Okay, so next up is the complementary metal oxide semiconductor with active pixel sensor. So uh, some manufacturer, one, it says one manufacturer, uses a CMOS APS sensor instead of CCD. The chip is actually less expensive per, to produce and it offers a greater durability than the CCD one does. It's just newer. It's, it's just come out later, so uh, most of the offices haven't picked this up yet. Um, it's the sensors can be connected to a computer using a low power external connection such as a USB. All right, and last but not least is the computer. So it is used to store the incoming electronic signal and it does all of the work for converting the electronic signal from the sensor into a shade of gray that is viewed on the computer monitor. The computer digitized, processes, and stores the information received from the sensor. Um, the image is recorded on a computer monitor in anywhere from 0.5 to 120 seconds, um, depending on you know how fast your computer's uh, RAM is going. And then it has a split screen and magnification capability, which is, is really nice. It allows us to um, uh, compare our radiographs side by side. Um, the speed of the image recording is extremely useful during certain dental procedures like endodontics, right? Because we want them to be very quick so we can figure out if we need to uh, continue uh, deeper into the, the, the canal, the root canal, or if you've already reached the apex, right? Um, images that are stored on there can be stored uh, permanently on the computer forever or they can be printed out for a hard copy for the patient. Um, and then they can be uh, transmitted electronically, right? We can email or uh, even fax, I guess. Uh, you would have to print it and then fax it. But anyway, uh, you can just transmit it electronically to insurance companies or if we have to send a referral or if the patient goes for a second opinion, um, you can just send them right over. You don't have to go through that process of duplicating your film, which is really nice. Okay, so then there's two types of digital imaging. There is direct and then there's indirect. Direct is where you take the radiograph or you, you, you know, um, expose the, the sensor and then it is immediately sent to the computer. 
Indirect requires an additional step. So you, you expose the receptor, and then you have to take that receptor over and scan it through a scanner before it is uploaded into the computer. Um, and then with this one, this is where those storage phosphors uh, imaging, that is the photostimulable uh, phosphor plates that I've been talking about. All right, so here's direct. This is the components include the x-ray unit, the sensor, and the computer. The sensor is placed into the mouth. The sensor captures the image and it, it automatically transfers it right over to the computer. And then on the computer, you have that software that enhances and it stores the image. This happens within seconds of the sensor being exposed to radiation. This also can be used for uh, extra oral images as well as intraoral images. I haven't really talked about that yet. Okay, so then indirect digital imaging uh, requires storage phosphor imaging, which it's a wireless digital imaging system. It's it looks very similar to traditional film, except that the sensor itself is reusable. And so the sensor is a photostimulable phosphor plate. It's a reusable imaging plate that's coated with phosphors and it's used instead of a sensor with a fiber optic cable. The photo, the, I'm sorry, the phosphor coated plates are flexible and they fit into the mouth. Some patients find them more comfortable um, as opposed to the, uh, the larger bulkier sensors and they do have a little bit of a give, right? You don't wanna bend them, you don't wanna manipulate them at all. Um, as opposed to film, you can kind of like, you know, soften the corner. You cannot do that with these plates. Then you also have to have a high-speed scanner that you use to convert that information into electronic files. This type of digital imaging is less rapid obviously, because you have to scan the, the plate, right? This is the one of the most common that I've seen in dental offices. Uh, if they don't have um, the wired sensors, they have these. And um, the office that I worked at for the longest time had these, and they were, they were wonderful. Um, you do have to replace them. You know, they're not, um, you know, you can't use them forever. They say that they're supposed to capture about 50. I don't know any office that re that's replacing them that often, but once they have a crease on them or you start to uh, see like the, the image quality isn't as good, it's time to order some new ones. This is what those PSP or photostimulable phosphor plates look like. Um, you can see that they come in all of the different sizes, including three, which I don't know why. And this one is, a, this is an example of a scanner. This is probably not the most common one. This is just one of the manufacturers who makes these. Um, the most common one is made by a company called ScanX. The plates look exactly the same. There's no difference there. Um, they go in these little sleeves like this, these little sleeves. Uh, there's a little, that white part right there is actually like a little piece of a strip that you peel off and there's tape, not tape, but uh, glue. Then you like seal the, the thing up so that saliva doesn't contaminate the actual sensor. And um, it usually has like a little notch on one side, like right here. And when you go to open them, you actually just tear open the little, the little sleeve. And they're really, they're really nice. They're very easy to use. Um, and you run it through the scanner. Um, typically, it will uh, change the image up here and it will transfer it to co your computer. And then right before it comes out, it will uh, expose it to a clearing light that will erase the image from the plate so that once it comes out, you just rewrap it in a nice new barrier and then you're good to go. You can take x-rays again. Okay, so as far as um, prepping your sensor and placing the sensor inside the mouth um, and, and, you know, being able to properly uh, reuse these sensors, um, none of the sensors, the photostimulable plates, the wired sensors, the, you know, the CCD sensors, the wireless CCD, the C uh, CMOS sensors, none of this stuff is able to withstand heat sterilization. Okay, none of it, which means that you must wrap all of these things in a barrier that is disposable, okay? If you do not wrap them in a barrier that is disposable, you would have to sterilize them because they would be contaminated. So as long as you wrap them and then when you take the wrapper off, you properly disinfect the sensor and then you put on a clean new sterile um, 
barrier before you expose it to the next patient. It's very important to follow not only the manufacturer's instructions for how to use these, but also following infection control. Um, it's really important you follow the manufacturer's provided instruction booklet as far as how to uh, operate the system, how to set up the equipment, how to properly uh, prepare the patient, and on those exposure settings as well. Um, each type of thing you're using, it'll come with different software. Um, you know, I've seen Kodak, I've seen Open Dental, I've seen Dexis is what we use. Um, I've seen a lot of different softwares for the types of x-ray, digital x-rays that are taken, um, and it really just depends on whatever type of office you go to, um, what units they have, and what um, software that they're using. Okay, so getting the sensor ready, you have to put it in a sealed waterproof uh, sleeve, right? Um, the sensor can't be heat sterilized, so it has to have a disposable barrier. Uh, most of the time, there are rigid digital sensors, wired or, or wireless, and you want to cover those with a barrier sleeve, which we do in our clinic. Um, they make these things called rubber uh, finger cots, which can be placed underneath the disposable barrier to further protect the wired. Uh, we don't use these, it's really not necessary. Um, the patient isn't biting down directly onto the, the, the plastic part, they're biting like kind of around by the cord. So it's not something that we usually have to worry about. Um, they come in different sizes, obviously the sensors come in different sizes, so the barriers come in different sizes, that's going to be important. You don't want to have um, too small of a barrier on your sensor because then it will tear and then it will be contaminated, right? So make sure you're using the right size. As far as placement goes, you're going to place it into the patient's mouth the exact same way you would place film, right? As far as where you have the sensor lined up, where um, you know where the anterior edge is, where the center of the the um, receptor is, is going to be placed in the exact same way as you would place the others. Now, typically, the paralleling method is preferred um, exposure because you don't want to rely on the sensor having to be flexible. You don't want to use the bisecting because sometimes it means having the, the film bend just a little bit. Um, and so you don't, you don't want that. Paralleling technique is preferred because you have less distortion. Okay, so the advantages of digital imaging is that it has a superior grayscale resolution. Uh, that's probably the, the biggest uh, advantage is that the digital imaging has up to 265 shades of gray um, compared with the 16 to 25 shades of gray on conventional film. Uh, another big key thing here in that grayscale resolution is that you can actually uh, change the, contra the contrast and the density a little bit. You can tweak it with, um, dig with digital radiology as opposed to conventional. Once you, once you take the image with conventional, you, you kind of get what you get. Um, there is reduced exposure to radiation. This is the, the best thing that comes of uh, digital radiation, I think, because it's so much lower, it's safer for our patients. And, uh, and this is one of the things that your patients love to hear, is that you're using digital and that they get up to 50 to 90% reduced uh, radiation exposure because of what your office is doing. There is an increased speed of image viewing. You're not having to wait until you process your films before you are able to view the image, um, which is nice in that, you know, if you do have to take a retake, um, you're able to know pretty quickly whether or not you, the image that you got was a diagnostic image. Uh, there is a lower equipment and film cost as far as replacing things. Uh, the long-term overall cost is lower because you're not constantly having to buy new film. You're not having to buy new film mounts. You're not having to buy um, you know, processing solutions. You're not having to have someone come in and repair your automatic processor all the time. Um, and so overall, uh, long-term cost-wise is lower. There is an increased in efficiency because um, you know you don't have to take your radiographs and then let your patients sit while you go run your radiographs through the processor and kind of hang out and wait for the processor to finish and then take that time to mount the radiographs, things like that. It's, it's much more um, streamlined for the, the radiographer. Uh, there is an enhancement in the diagnostic image, um, like you can, uh, one, blow the image up and make it full screen. You're not just looking at a tiny little square of, uh, of things. So, you know, as far as um, 
you're, you're not going to miss things on your radiographs because of uh, it being a very small, minute um, structure. You're going to be able to increase the size, you can change the color, you can change the contrast and density. Um, that's probably one of the nicest things. This is where that digital subtraction really comes into play. You can see that uh, in this image down here, they have changed the color so that everything that's white is things that in the mouth were radiolucent. Um, or radiolucent meaning black, they've now made those white, and then everything that was radiopaque, which is white, they've now made that black. So these fillings here, these are probably silver fillings because they're entirely black. And so you're able to really capture, you know, small changes and, and things that maybe would go undetected uh, by changing the color. And then, um, it's a very effective patient education tool because you're able to really blow that image up and make it large. You're able to draw right on the screen the way that I do. Um, and you're able to see and show the patient very effectively how uh, each of those structures are manipulated. You're able to show them, you know, carries what that looks like. You're able to show them what bone loss looks like. And you're able to really have a good conversation as far as um, showing them that. You can also, a lot, a lot of offices I know have an example radiograph of what healthy looks like, and so you can show them the difference between, hey, this is where your bone level should be, and this is where, you know, maybe you were last time, and look at where your bone level is now, or look at, you know, the difference between healthy and, and where you are. So it's, it's a very effective tool. And then the last one is eco-friendly alternative. Because we're not using those processing solutions, um, we're able to save the, the planet from, from having to, uh, to dispose of those solutions. Okay, and whenever you have advantages, you have disadvantages. So one of the main disadvantages of digital is the cost. It is uh, very expensive to purchase the sensors uh, and to purchase the software. Um, usually, you know, the, the tube heads and the, the actual x-ray equipment is, is usually versatile unless you have a much, much older unit. Um, but as far as, you know, getting all of those things, a, a CCD sensor is, um, you know, anywhere, it, it's, it's, the average cost is about $10,000 a sensor. So, um, you know, it, it's very expensive. And then image quality, this used to be a thing as far as the difference between um, the actual resolution of the image from before to now uh, based on, you know, uh, pixel size and things like that. But that, that's no longer a thing. If you read on page 296, you'll see that the book explains that it's it's no longer a concern anymore. Um, sensor size and thickness, um, because the sensor uh, for digital is is much thicker. Sometimes patients have a hard time with that. Um, whereas, you know, with film, you were able to kind of bend it a little bit, uh, even though you weren't supposed to, you were able to kind of like soften the corner. Um, but you can't do that with a sensor. So the, the patient just has to, to tolerate it. And you just need to be really good at, at getting it placed in there in a way that is comfortable, but you also get the image that you need. Um, at the PSP plates, I know sometimes, um, radiographers might think that you can treat them just like film, but it is very important that you never ever try to crease or bend a corner on a PSP plate. Don't do that. Um, and also with a with a PSP plate, usually patients are comfortable, more comfortable than they are with the sensor because while you're not supposed to bend it, it does have a little bit of flexibility. So when they bite down on it, um, it, it doesn't usually like kind of cut into them the way that they, they feel like other sensors do, uh, even though they don't. Um, the infection control, we talked about this, where the sensors cannot withstand heat sterilization. Um, and so you have to be very mindful of infection control and be very careful that you are um, not contaminating the sensor um, and then exposing your patients to contaminated uh, items. So it's really important that you are paying a lot of con uh, a lot of attention to that cross-contamination. And then uh, wear and tear. So just like everything else in the office, there is a certain amount of wear and tear based on use. And so, uh, it, you know, you need to be mindful of the fact that if you have a very old sensor, um, you might not be getting as good of images anymore. 
And unfortunately for a dentist, that means replacing the sensor, uh, which is pretty costly. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, and then legal issues. Um, your book talks about editing the actual image that you see. So, you know, if you change the contrast or density and then you were to save the new contrast or density, um, as far as being able to use that new edited image, in a uh, court of law as you know saying maybe why you uh, either missed or you caught something that either was or was not there um, that is it, it is a legal image or it is a legal issue and you need to be mindful that if you are drastically editing the images that you have that you are saving the original so that uh, it can be compared to the one that you edit um, one of the things that we really don't talk about in the book here that I think is worth noting is that because it is a electronic uh, source of information, um, your patient's radiographs are um, health information. So it does fall under HIPAA. And the patient, in order to release these records to other offices or things like that, you need to have your patient's um, consent and it is not okay to take pictures of someone's radiographs um, or to send these radiographs anywhere because uh, they could potentially identify your patient and so uh, be mindful that the the radiographs the the images that you're getting from um, these digital imaging is considered a part of the uh, electronic um, patient records. Okay, so so don't just willy-nilly send these wherever uh, you think that, they, that maybe they should go. Just like always, if you have questions or concerns, you feel free to, uh, to reach out to me or put them in that question and answer discussion.